Hey, this is Stu for Love Yoga Anatomy, and I'm here today with Adam Keane, and Hi. today we're going to talk food, aren't we? Hi. So, Adam, once upon a time, was uh, at Purple Valley, weren't you? I worked in as the, a cook. As yeah, a cook, yeah, and, uh, and feeding and, the many. Yeah. And, but also yeah. you have a keen interest in that sort of thing. do, yeah, you can pun on that, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I worked as a chef in London as well. Okay, yeah, so I've you've done, got some background. Got some retreat catering and yeah, right. different things. Brilliant. Yeah. And then we have, I have a load of people that write to me and say, Stu, can you film more to do with food relative to the yoga practice and things like that? So you might think that we're now going to talk about this mm, vitamins and this and that and whatever and whatever. Yeah, but I don't have much that's not, no, yeah, no, that's no, not where Adam's visit, coming yeah. from. Yeah. So Adam, what's your, yeah. what's your take on things? What should we be doing as far as how should we eat to support the yoga practice? I think first of all is that realizing that you need to take control of making your own meals and that's the first step. I mean, pragmatic steps. What I'm finding more and more is that we have these high ideas of diet which are then unsustainable. Um, and making it quite complicated and introducing the fact that maybe we need to be eating to a certain concept like the hot one now is the veganism like I, right. should you I getting a lot I'm getting a lot of questions about whether I should be vegan or not or you know I should eat a raw food diet and yeah. this is from a, um, a moral perspective or a health perspective do you think uh, no or a trend <laughs> or trendy perspective well I just think people don't know what to eat and there's a lot of confusion around and there's a lot of mixed messages and I think that now it's almost in a lot of people's interest to confuse us and so that they can sell us a product or right. sell us their information whereas i don't think that i mean having worked as a cook and many of you if you met me in my store i've cooked meals for you you know <laughs> you know that diet can be tasty nutritious right. and sustaining for you hopefully for your day's practice you know yeah. and it doesn't have to be something which is out of your control yeah. um and i'm just trying to write this book right now which is giving basic ideas and how to empower people to feel confident that, that you can cook adequate meals and uh, you can uh, sustain yourself in a in a healthy way without needing to cling literally to certain dietary regimes because ultimately the diet has to spring from something in you it has to spring from uh, it's, it's, it's something you like eating well something which is in the body energy the body it has its own cravings it has its own predispositions and, and that will that will show you the way in the end and if you've got an idea in your head then it's constantly setting up this battlefield well I ought to eat that but I, I don't really feel like that so I ought to eat that so we're getting more confused and either we win to a certain degree and we're miserable in our constrictions because we feel we're constricted or, or we lose and we chuck the whole thing out altogether yeah. we don't eat any, you know we don't pay any attention to the diet and again i think that there's a way that we can create a middle road which feels sustainable over a period of time and whilst not denying yourself it also is working towards making more beneficial choices so there's an element of experiment there and seeing what works if you eat you know one way the night before and you're doing a daily practice and I think the beauty of the daily practice is it really does really show you where you're at with your diet you yeah. know I mean in a way that a daily practice of p playing the piano doesn't you know I mean you're getting up and you know you're going to do something physical early in the morning and in, well I mean have a couple of glasses of wine if you feel like it but then still do the practice in the morning and see how you feel then you know? like, <laughs> there's something that, about yeah, a regular practice that you. tends to yeah, take yeah, away yeah. some of the it'll excesses doesn't yeah, it yeah it'll train it naturally yeah. out of you without you having to question anymore I mean I came to a university 20 years ago yeah. and my I don't think I even had a diet. My diet evolved around Guinness as my nutrition. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it was like yeah. my rugby days. Yeah. It was very yeah. similar. Yeah, like I was told that Guinness was, was given to pregnant women, you know, in, yeah. on the NHS in England. Yeah. You know, and during the wartime, and that had all your nutrients in it. So I would just drink Guinness <laughs> and smoke. And I had a terrible diet, and uh, I wasn't given much uh, instruction on how to cook. Uh, in my upbringing. Yeah. So I, I didn't even know how to boil an egg when I went to oh, university. Wow. So yeah. So I, I, I got. After the yoga, it started to make me interested because I felt a bit better and naturally I wanted to make better choices. So it came that way round from the physical led to the choices rather than having an idea in my head and then trying to apply it to my life. It, it kind of naturally sprung and I didn't need to stop drinking. It just happened yeah. because I made myself do that practice in the morning because I, you know, because I wanted to because I, it felt good. And then naturally, the night before, it, it trained it out of me. Having those, the the, uh, the diet just generally naturally felt into line. You can't. I, don't, I think if you're forcing something, then that's also if you if you look at yoga, you know, all the different aspects of it. And the himsa, 
you're doing violence to yourself if you're forcing yourself to act one way or the other as well. And what about, because I know I've said before, you know, this is coming from a person that's not a vegetarian, that you can't really call yourself a yogi if you uh, eat meat. Would you go along with that? And so I'm including myself in that. I, I wouldn't call myself a yoga. I call myself a, a yoga practitioner or even an asana practitioner. Uh, yeah. But I don't think I could call myself a yogi well, because I don't have much of a philosoph philosophy background. I don't practice ahimsa as far as other animals go. Uh, yeah, as disgraceful yeah, yeah. as that may be. <laughs> Which I am. I was saying to Anne, I'm really not happy with myself that I, I do this. But that is the reality of it. But then I also wouldn't call myself a yogi. So do you well, think, you, I think, do you, think you yeah. could? I think, well, I think yogi is an accomplished being, isn't it? Like it's an end stage, I yeah. would. I think we're all trying to aspire towards being a yogi. And, and in our modern terms, I think that would just be inquiry, really, isn't it? And it's just inquiry and choices and, and doing as much as you can, you know? And I think that you can practice, if the, if the question is, can you practice yoga whilst eating meat? I'd say yes, absolutely. You can um, do that. You, um, yeah, but I mean, why you not? Could you consider um, yourself more well, spiritually clean or whatever it, we yeah, want to think I, about you know, it? I mean, I think there's many ways that we commit um, himsa, we, you mm. know, that we're harming. And, uh, and, you know, you can be a vegetarian and also be, uh, you know, not the most kind Nicest or caring. Nicest person. Yeah, mm, absolutely. So, exactly. I mean, I, you know, that's a bit of a, you know, a get out clause, but I don't think that, that e eating or not of meat is the be all and end all. I mean, I, th I do think that in practicing the physical, obviously you're <laughs> an argument against this, <laughs> but uh, you know, I always thought Gen that pra practicing the physical, it did lead towards yeah. more of that, that sense of, you have the sense of, a, I think it's a, like in, inquiring a, produces a, gentleness of perspective yeah because instead and a himsa essentially is just violence all right so it's in, and a himsa is naturally coming from the the asana based aspects of the ashtanga because it's i think it trains that violence out of you because you become as you become more aware your natural perspective is to soften into a more gentle approach to life mm. and mm. you see that the awareness awareness means looking at the natural laws of life and acting accordingly rather than going against the natural law and obviously one of the most obvious ways you can do that is killing something which is alive which is yeah. going against the natural law of living in a way yeah. you know yeah, so yeah. so it's, it's a gentleness of perspective and i think the awareness also involves taking out uh, your consciousness and, and hypothesizing that someone else has a, a consciousness or something else has a consciousness as well and doesn't just like you don't want to suffer that thing probably doesn't want to suffer either so it's it kind of a levels of inquiry levels of inquiry but I think that following it slavishly from the head because you feel that you ought to uh, that doesn't really come from the place of true understanding that's you know, and if you take it on just from the head, as I ought to feel, I, or, you know, this, should do this it doesn't, it doesn't do the job either. It has mm. to come from the heart or wherever it, the body energy is on the inside. And um, when it's naturally flowing, it, you know, whatever that is, that is the true state of affairs. Yeah. So uh, I don't think the concept is useful. I think that you have to respect also what you feel inclined to eat and gradually I think things can drop into line. I think the most important thing that I want to mention with the food is that it has to be a whole lifestyle and it has to be sustainable for your lifestyle. And so making small steps, or realizing that maybe you can't do the whole thing yet is a way in, I think. As so what are some of the good things yeah. that you could incorporate or things that you might want to contemplate as to eating better? If, can we say eating better? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think obviously, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm kind of wary about being too uh, blanket with the definitions of what is good or bad eating, you know. Yeah. But on the other hand, we can all say that fast food is bad eating, processed food. Detrimental, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. To processed your overall food health. Is, mm. I mean, I think, you know, I mean, we can say what not to eat. It's harder to say what to eat. I think yeah. my, after many years of cooking and working with diet and becoming quite hardline for a while on macrobiotics and being kind of miserable and quite judgmental towards others, I found that wasn't useful. I think that one thing that I can say after thinking and working with it for years is that a simple diet is difficult, but is the one thing you can do. 
and complicating it, i.e. eating food that has been denatured in, in a processed way, even, you know, I know that we like to eat out a lot, but I say, yeah. that, you know, like, the, you know, the simplification also means trying to cook your own meals more. It means learning to appreciate simpler tastes. Right. Um, uh, not, if you can, avoiding buying processed food, which means eating, even if you can cook your own, I mean, soak your own lentils rather than buying a tin of lentils, that would yeah. be better. So it's constantly simplifying the stages between you and your food. Yes. You know, so if we could take it to the bottom line, obviously it'd be ultimately best if we could grow that kale and pick it. If we can't do that, or can we get it closer to the source? So sourcing becomes more important. I mean, can you go to a farmer's market? Well, that takes effort as well. And we have to realize that we might not always be able to make that time and effort to go to the farmer's market. Well, then we'll try and get it at a better supermarket. You know, so it's, it's degrees of, isn't it? And, yeah. and just trying to find a way without beating yourself up that you go towards the best you can. And so what are some of the sort of things that you would eat? Um, yeah, I steer towards a simplistic diet, which is based as in Ayurveda and macrobiotic on grains, really, grains right. and legumes. So uh, a bit of beans, but beans are heavier. Uh, so lighter grains like lentils uh, and the smaller beans, uh, and then grains, alkalizing grains like millet, uh, amaranth, buckwheat, quinoa, uh, uh, brown rice to degrees. It are cool, like in Ayurvedic terms and macrobiotic terms, cooling and alkalizing grains. And I mean, Patabi Joyce used to say the practice is blood boiling. And now in macrobiotic, uh, George Ashawa, who was the founder of macrobiotic, says that the uh, the acidity for the body is death. Right? You know. And so right. what you're looking for is alkalizing foods, and these foods in Ayurveda are the kind of barley millet, buckwheat kind of grains, they're alkalizing and the acidifying uh, foods are a lot of the processed foods or the meats or um, generally the foods that you find <laughs> you've got yeah, attracted exactly. to and naturally they're often acid acid creating foods and the body is in, becomes an acid state and when it is in an acid state this is when it, it starts to degenerate into uh, cancer forming yeah. propensities and this kind of thing so you're trying to bring it towards an alkalizing state with these cooling, in macrobiotic terms, yin kind of foods, and less tastes, appreciating simpler tastes, eating simply more easily uh, digestible foods, because the other thing about meat, I remember I saw something, uh, uh, who was who's that guy? Sadguru, and he was saying about the uh, argument for vegetarianism, which I quite yeah. liked, which is, uh, imagine you've got a piece of software, and you're trying to take that piece of software and combine it to you, and the more complicated that piece of software is, i.e. the flesh of an animal, which has all this, uh, you know, it's more complicated than the lentil. You know? right. But you're trying to overwhelm that software and take it into you. And then when you're trying to take the energy into you, it's easier taken in if it's a simpler molecule. Mm -hmm. I mean, the same with uh, modern bread, right? Like uh, I was talking to, I used to own a health food shop and I was talking to someone making modern bread. Yeah. And he said, well, basically we've got this really old strain of wheat and it hasn't been modified, genetically modified, and it's got a number of chromosomes. And now if you look at the modern gluten intolerance, often that's coming from the fact that you're using a wheat that's really complicated. It's got like 16 or right. 20 chromosomes. So it's much harder to overwhelm that software. So the old ones were like, is it spelt and that sort of thing? Spelt or older forms hmm. of wheat. There's loads, right. loads of, I mean, we're just so, uh, we've got a monocrop of, you know, just we're using just one or two types of apple, grain, right. wheat, you know. So I mean, I think the main thing that I've come to nowadays and why I got fed up with restaurant cooking is that I couldn't focus on sourcing. And I've still got the idea of, and, and this is just due again, due to, it's due to business again, that you've got the need to make a certain amount of money because rents are so high. Yeah. Now I'd like to have a restaurant focused mainly on sourcing. And when you get a good quality ingredient, you don't need to mess around with that. You let yeah. the ingredient shine. You've got a good quality tomato that you found. I mean, I was in Crete a lot last year and and they're growing local tomatoes. You don't want to do anything with that thing. You, know? yeah. you just want to eat it, you know, with a bit yeah. of salt. You know, you don't need to. And but the problem nowadays is with with restaurants, especially in London, you've got high rent. You have to complicate the food to make it and justify the cost. The cost what you want to charge yeah, people, yeah. rather than and, and you can't afford to get something sourced as a better quality because you know, like you're competitive. You're in a competitive market, and people are used to paying a certain amount now. 
everyone, the, the cost is knock on, isn't it? Um, I know you mentioned barley earlier as an option. I remember um, getting told off once in a, in a yoga retreat center where I was working and we had some people from different countries there and they'd made porridge with the barley and the one woman said, uh, what's barley? You know, I haven't heard of barley. And I was like, well, it's the stuff that you feed horses normally. <laughs> and the woman, she overheard me. It's like, we spent so much money <laughs> buying this organic <laughs> barley. And you're telling me, it's like, these are horses down the road. So we can source but many then, uh, yeah, different, yeah, many yeah. options, yeah, can't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. yeah no. Well, no, yeah, it's a good thing that oats were used to talk, feed horses as well. Yeah, right? I mean, and there's nothing wrong with... Uh, eating a bit of animal food. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I say, always used to say, you know, you know, I got into vegetarianism like before, when you still had to define the, what that was to people between yeah. veganism and vegetarianism. And people used to say, oh, millet. And I used to say about millet, which I read this macrobiotic stuff and they used yeah. to talk about millet and they say, well, millet you feed to the budgies, Chickens and things budgies. like that. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can use all grains. I mean, I think another problem is that we're just using one or two grains. Like, I mean, the, a lot of the problem with the, the gluten intolerance is that we're using so much wheat or we're just just eating you know wheat three times a day you know and, and the, the point was that maybe we might have used varied grains or, or that might be beneficial rather than just like you know just kind of like can, uh, cannoning the body constantly with this one crop of one strain of wheat yeah. and in the end it becomes upset with that rather than spreading it out and one day you have barley another day you have you know, and vary your diet. I mean, the other thing is you have to want to eat it because mm. the energy has to be wanting to re be received in that way. It has to, I mean, just in terms of the saliva wants to flow, you know, I mean, you have to, you have to want to eat what you're yeah. eating. Yeah, because mm. if your metabolism isn't wanting to eat that, then I think that it won't be assimilated. And there's more to food also than just nutrition. There's it, it an energy to that food, you know? And I think that also when you're getting that, you know, I mean, we do what you can, and again, you don't want to be too hard line because it has to be diet has to be taken to what you're able to do right now. Otherwise, I have the fear that people will just think, forget it. Then I, I just haven't got a chance. But I think you have to realise that we have to look at sourcing, and if you can go to get the a thing close to the source, then that's better than allowing it to sit on a supermarket shelf mm. for two weeks. You yeah. know, because there's a big difference in energy of kale which you've gotten. A three days old from a farmer's market or less to the kale that you bought two weeks ago because mm. that's how long it takes to get to the supermarket you know and okay that's all you've got the chance to do but I mean the food has an energy as well so you can't quantify it in terms of you know the the nutrition on the back of a packet and yeah. a lot of the vegan diet now that's coming it's it's a highly processed diet you know and whatever it says on the back, you look at the quant, you know, I was looking the other day with yeah. my wife and it's like, well, that's got hydrogenated palm oil. Exactly. And how can you call that organic, you know? Yeah, so, so it's labeled organic. So you have to take the ball into your own court. You have to take the re your own reins of health rather than let other people do it for you because unfortunately, you know, like that, that won't work. And even, you know, just eating, uh, saying you're vegan doesn't mean you're healthy, does it? You can eat complete shite and yeah and because you can eat cake all day long can't you a vegan and cake yeah 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 it's yeah. like it's not yeah, healthy yeah, yeah. just say okay so i've got maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. so but it's a balanced diet doesn't yeah. mean it's good just because it's you know this that yeah the other. oh yeah or what's balanced yeah and it's I mean, not balanced yeah that's what I'm or what is balanced maybe. in the end you know in the end i think that is individual isn't it as well because some people subsist on one's diet and mm. other people subsist on another diet i mean um it, it depends person to person. So uh, one of the big things that people often say to me is like they have a low energy that they find that the the practice is draining them out. Well, first they need to change what they're doing in the practice and maybe don't yes. do so much. But what sort of things could they eat I to think, maybe yeah. support them? I, I think them more one, one difficulty with the, the vegan diet or the vegetarian diet is it, mm. it, it is hard to, it, it's easy getting, because the animal flesh contains a, a full uh, protein in a way it contains yeah. a lot of nutrients and it's harder and you have to make more thoughts to have a balanced vegetarian diet because you have to look at a lot more places to get your you know the optimum health as it yeah. were so that's hard so I mean if you, if you haven't got time I'm not saying eat meat but it's an easier option than uh, eating uh, you know a processed vegan diet mm. you know because you haven't got time I don't know there's no easy answers to this I mean my best option is trying to keep it simple and eat whole grains and eat simply um, 
in terms of what was the question, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> You're just fucking waffling, aren't you now? <laughs> <laughs> it was about being giving more energy to right. to for those you, people yeah, that are you can you can do it with a vegetarian diet, but it's harder. I mean, uh, I remember Surat had this idea years ago of uh, doing uh, before the ideas of like uh, vegan proteins. He used to have this idea. He used to tell people grind mung beans in the right. morning and have that as a smoothie before yeah. or after coffee. I, th <laughs> <laughs> I think that was after practice. And he used to tell people. I remember he was saying. You grind the mung beans, I think they were soaked overnight and they're raw, and yeah. then you grind them and you add them to a smoothie as a kind of prototype of a vegan smoothie. Because, right. yeah, because the, the, the beans obviously have a protein in them, you know, but again, it's just, you know, it's, it takes some thought to, to soak your beans and do mm. this, and it's, it's not easy. I mean, in terms of energy building foods, I personally have found that the millet and the quinoa and the buckwheat, they did give, give a protein. You've got this idea in macrobiotics that if you combine a legume with a grain, that that right. provides a full protein. So you use a, a lentil and a bean right. <clears throat> with a grain, and that is a whole protein that you, you know, so you can do that without having to eat meat. Yeah. Um, you know, so that is a and good- What about, because there's also a lot, uh, I say trendy, but you know, there's probably been and gone, I'm not very up with it. But um, raw food, is it, is it really more difficult to process than cooked food or, or not? Uh, I think a full raw food diet is really taxing on the system because the raw, if you're thinking of the cooking as the first step in digestion, then it's helping you digest in lots of ways. And there's this argument that raw food keeps the body, the, all the nutrients in the food, yeah. but then they're very hard to assimilate. So you might have all the nutrients in the carrot, carrot, but whether you can actually assimilate that raw or whether the digestion finds it too hard and you get rid of most of that. Right. So if you break it down with cooking before, then actually makes the the nutrients more available in lots of ways because the, the raw food is a really he uh, in a way it's a really heavy diet it's a really heavy on digestion. I know um, it always made me feel and, bloated whenever yeah, I tried to and, eat raw and, food. And, and I mean I think you also have to look at time and place like eating more raw in the summer. It's just I mean there's a lot of things that I always look to my nan as a, a paradigm for a, a basic and natural wisdom towards food. Right. You know because I mean. You know, like she would have eaten a salad in the summer just as you would. Like, yeah. you know, like eating a salad in the depth of winter. Well, it just doesn't seem to make much sense to me. Or no. when you're in Bali or Gaul. Yeah, or you your food is much lighter than you're when you're... You're actually going to eat more raw. That, but then you take that raw food diet. And the problem is that as soon as you get an idea and you think, well, I felt good on that. Then you take it and you just think, well, I'm going to come back to London. I'm gonna, I felt good in Goa or Bali mm. having that diet. Now I'm going to do that in London in the dead, dead of winter. And it's like, well, that doesn't work. So I think like with any system, it's like, it's like rule, it's rules, but then it's modifications and it's not clinging too literally to anything because that doesn't work at all times, you know, in all, in all places, in all pe places and for all people. Yeah. I mean, eating a certain way at a certain time is good and then, but it never good. And then as you get older, you have to change it as well. I mean, unfortunately I can't eat the way I did when I was 20, you know? You know, you just, you just, you know, you have to amend it for your lifestyle. You don't like a, look like a guy that's going to put on a paunch or anything, though. <laughs> that could happen, yeah. You could go back oh, on that yeah, Guinness yeah. diet from your 20s. <laughs> <laughs> I just think the thing is that you have to amend it to the demands of your lifestyle and the, and the different stages of your life, yeah. you know? And I think that it's so easy for us to think, because we don't necessarily want to make, because it's hard to constantly keep looking you want to get an idea and think well I'm just gonna be vegan and then it's easy and you've got a clear way through because there's so much choice out there and, and it's choice that's really messing with people's heads and yeah. it makes them anxious and it makes them confused and then the easiest idea is just think, well, think let someone else take care of that or I need to get it from a book and my idea is that in the long term that can never sustain you that the choice has to come from within you and so it's giving the basic rules of thumb that then you can apply when you go out. And yeah. I think that looking at a simplicity of ingredient and thinking, well, how many stages of modification has that taken until it's reached my plate? You know? It's a good rule yeah, it, of thumb. Or yeah. the, also you have to realize that the, the main energy brought to that food or the quality of what you eat in your plate is, yeah. is what you bring to it and what's inside you. Now, if you're a vegan, but you're 
super stressed with the vegan diet yeah. or you're feeling very angry and judgmental to everyone around you that uh, can't keep that up yeah. and I've been there as well and that's not uh, that's not a good place to uh, energy to be bringing to the table either yeah. you know that there's you know there's got to be it's got to be a bit of a give and take and I think if you have a that's why I like the idea of habit and lifestyle and then you can make those exceptions to the rule whilst yeah. keeping on a basic rule you can also amend that or break that when you haven't got the chance to it's do better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that cool. make any sense? Is that reasonable? None at all. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it made some sense to you. <laughs> Thanks, Adam, for Thank sharing you. your ideas. Thank and you. um, again, if you want to leave any comments, you've got any questions for Adam about anything, do go ahead and um, see you again soon. Thank you. <laughs> cool. <laughs>